welcome to our science lesson. Now we are starting a new topic today and the topic is sound and we are focusing on some good vibrations. So you can see here in the background someone playing a guitar. You can see every time that we pluck a string on the guitar it actually moves and that is how sound is created. Now our aim of today is I can describe and explain sound sources and our success criteria is I can identify and describe sound sources around school Obviously, instead of around school, we're actually going to just do this at home. And I can explain how sources of sound vibrate, creating sound. So now, firstly, well, what is sound? And I want to know what you already know about sound. And do you know anything about how sounds are made? So it says, complete your sound mini map to show what you already know and to ask questions about you want to, what you want to find out. Now, attach the teams or on our timetable, there is something called a mind map. So you might want to print this out or just in your exercise, but you can just put sound and just do some ideas about what you already know. Along the side, there are also some questions. Well, so how are sounds made? What makes sounds louder or quieter? How do musical instruments work? I want you to answer some of these questions along your mind map. And I want to know what you already know. And at the bottom it says, do you have any questions about sound? Would you like to find anything out? I want you just to write your thoughts below. Once you've done that guys, take a picture, upload it to Teams because I want to know what you know. So pause the video and complete the mind map. Okay, so your mind map should be finished, so let's continue on with our lesson. Okay, so now we're going to watch this clip to see how the different families of musical instruments create different sounds. And whilst we're watching this, I want you to think of some describing words of some of these instruments can you describe some of the sounds that they make? So let's see. It's easy to make a sound. All you have to do is make something vibrate. You could twang a string or a rubber band. Or you could blow down something. Or you could bang something together. Or you could scrape something. Or you can shake something. There are three families of musical instruments. This is one of them, strings. As you can see in this guitar, when you pluck the string, it vibrates. That vibration gets passed onto the air, and that's how you hear the sound. And here's another stringed instrument from India called a Gopi Chan. The second family we're going to look at is wind instruments. These work by blowing into a tube and making the air inside vibrate. Listen to these pan pipes. You can do the same thing with a horn. This instrument's called a balafon. It belongs to the last family of instruments called percussion. These produce vibrations when you bang them. And you can do exactly the same thing with a pair of bongos. So there we've got three music, different families of musical instruments. So we've got the string. So for example, is a guitar. When you pluck the string, the string vibrates and causes a sound. Next we've got wind. So where we use our mouths and blow into something and the air inside the musical instrument vibrates, creating a sound again. And our final one is percussion. So when we hit an object and it makes that vibrate and create a sound. So now thinking of our descriptive words of what could we describe the different sounds as? Well, let's see. Look at the words below and did you choose any of these? So I've got vibrate, vibration, twang, blow, bang, scrape, shake, and then pluck, like I get plucking the strings. So this is all about vibrations. All the instruments are played in different ways, but they all have something in common. They all create sounds by vibrating. The strings of the guitar and the gopachand vibrate when they are plucked. And so the gopachand is that Indian guitar which when he squeezed it, it made a different sound. The pan pipes and horn are filled with air, which vibrate when they are blown. The balafon and the bongos make sound when they are hit or banged, causing the blocks or the skin to vibrate. But what is a vibration? Well, let's find out. 
Well, we can see and feel vibrations whenever sounds are made. So now, I want you to gently place your hand on your throat and say, ah. Can you feel the vibrations on your vocal cords? Now pause the video and give that a go. Okay, so that is how what we, we hear our sounds. So when anyone talks, our vocal cords are vibrating and a sound is produced. So now we're going to watch a video and we're going to see a few grains of rice on a drum skin. And we're going to see what happens when someone gently bangs the drum. And we're going to see what we observe. So here we have a drum with some rice in the middle and someone is going to gently play it and we're going to see what happens to the rice. see that every time that this drum is hit the rice or the vibrations of the skin makes the rice it almost looks like they're dancing doesn't it and you can see the louder that the drum goes the more that the rice begin to dance so let's see what do you observe well firstly there was the drum there's some rice and then there was someone hitting it wasn't it so the grains of rice bounce on the drum skin when it is hit and this is because the drum skin vibrates and the vibrations pass to the grains of rice, which also vibrate. Then now we're going to look at a tuning fork. And we're going to listen to the sound that it makes. And this next part, it says lower the tuning fork into a bowl of water. We're not actually going to be able to do that, but that this, this experiment or that this video that we're going to watch, we might get a general idea of what might happen when we put it into a water. So what do you observe? Well, let's have a look. So here we have got a lady and she's got a tuning fork in her right hand and she's got a ping pong ball attached to a piece of string and this young man is holding a piece of string with a ping pong ball on the end and he's holding it still for this lady to do the experiment on. So let's watch and see what happens. On, with your right hand, put your arm out, far here, and then You'll see this is a tuning fork, and when I apply mechanical energy, you can see some of the vibrations. And then, when I hit it harder, the stronger the vibrations, the more the ping pong ball moves. And that is the energy being transferred from the tuning fork to the ball. And the stronger the vibrations, the louder the sound. Thank you. Now have a seat. Perfect. So you can see there. The tuning fork, every time that this lady bangs it on the on the, on the the table, the more that it vibrates, see that all this built up energy can actually move the ping pong ball, it can hit it away. So, so what did you observe? Well obviously this is about it in a bowl of water, and this is our tuning fork. Obviously in our video they had circles on the end, but it's, it's exactly the same as this one. So as well as these built up vibrations, if we were to put that tuning fork then into some, a bowl of water, you would actually be able to see some ripples in the water when you place the tuning fork into it. And the reason why is because when the tuning fork is hit, it makes the sound. And these vibrations then travel through the water, making the ripples as the water vibrates. So now this is called a school sound survey. However, as we're not at school, we're actually going to do this at home. So it says, around school, or for you guys, around home, there are lots of different sounds. And some places will be noisy, whereas some places will be quiet. The loudness of the different places will even change throughout the day. So I want you to carry out a sound survey around your home to find which places are noisy and which places are quiet at different times of the day. You may even decide to rate each place out of five, with five being very noisy and zero being totally silent. You may choose to use a data logger which will record the loudness of each place for you to compare. So now, attached to Teams, there will be a school sound survey, but it was actually to be called an at-home sound survey. And it says on the left-hand side, what sounds could you hear? So I want you to go into different rooms in your house, so that might be the kitchen, the living room, your bedroom, and I want you just to think, what sounds can you hear? 
And then, if you can hear some sounds, what sounds might you be able to hear? You, for example, if I was in the living room, I might be able to hear my TV. I might be able to hear your radiators if they get turned on. I can imagine if it is about six o'clock at night, you might even, if you're in the kitchen, you might be, be able to hear some quite loud noises, the microwave dinging, the oven that's on, the extractor fan. Do it at different times throughout the day and just record the different sounds that you could hear. I think that's the end of our lesson. Uh, I'm excited to see all of your work. I'm excited to see how noisy that your households are. I hope you enjoy it and I'll see you in the next one.